Hello, friends, and welcome back to today's episode of Everyday Truth. So glad that you're listening. I know that some of you are watching, some of you are on a radio station, others are listening to the podcast on your car. So however you're listening, thank you. And it certainly does mean a lot to me. We are in the middle of Romans chapter two, but I think we might even try to finish the chapter today because it's all one extended thought. And here it is, that everybody is accountable to God, as we have seen. We all are. And in our sinfulness, before we come to Christ, regardless of your opportunity, whether you grew up in church and had the Bible taught to you every day or every week, and you were there when the doors were open, or whether you grew up in a home where the Bible was never mentioned, you're both accountable to God. Now, the person that received more information is more accountable, but the fact is every single person is accountable to God. Why? Because of the general revelation of God. God has demonstrated his eternal power and Godhead in creation. He's demonstrated his expectation of morality uh, through uh, the conscience that he has given to every man. And so whether uh, or not you are a Jew or a Gentile, you have an, an equal accountability before God. In fact, you're equally accountable. That doesn't mean that that's not the way to say it. You're both accountable, uh, you're, but you're not as accountable because unto whomsoever much is given shall be much required. And so we're going to find today that the Jewish people who had creation and they also had conscience— but they also had a very special revelation, not given to everybody. It was the law of God, the oracles of God, and the Mosaic law. And so now they, yes, are accountable because of these general reasons, but they're they're even that much more accountable because they've been given the law of God. Now, we're really going to unpack this in a deeper way next chapter probably next episode, but look, if you would, at at how this begins in verse number 17. So Romans chapter two, verse number 17, where the apostle Paul says, behold, thou art called a Jew and restest in the law. That's where you find your identity and make us thy boast of God. God's our God. We're, we're his people and knowest his will, or at least think they, they think that they do. And approve is the things that are more excellent. You make right choices because you have right information. Being instructed out of the law. So what does Paul say? Paul says, well, you're Jewish and you feel like you have a special privileged identity because you have the law. You know more than other people. You know God better. You know his will better. You make better choices. Now watch what he says about their attitude. Verse number 19, and you're confident and art confident that thou thyself art a guide to the blind. Yeah, you're smart. Those Gentiles, the rest of the world, they're stupid. You have light. You have wisdom. The rest of the world, they don't. They live in darkness. You're a guide to the blind, a light to them which are in darkness. This was the high and lofty view that the Jews had, especially the religious leadership. Verse number 20 They consider themselves to be an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth and the law. No, you you think you're all that in a bag of chips. I mean, you feel like you have all the information, all the knowledge, all the wisdom. Uh, You feel like you have the upper hand in your testimony and you're better than, and you teach other people from your high and lofty and exalted better position. And what the Apostle Paul has already hinted at here is you have a form of knowledge and of the truth. You know, are there things that the Jews know about God that the Gentiles don't know? Yes. Are there things, are there things that the Jews were doing that were right in and of themselves that the Gentiles were not doing? Yes. There certainly was a modicum of morality. There certainly was a form of knowledge and truth, but was it such that they were rightly from a right heart attitude and completely 
uh, without exception, obeying the law of God? And of course, the answer to that question is emphatically, no, they were not. They were actually living in self-delusion which is really interesting because that's the whole point that James makes in James chapter one about hearing the the word and doing the word. But if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, uh, James talks about in James chapter one. And he ultimately says that if you're hearing the word, understanding it, thinking you understand it, priding yourself and your inflated knowledge, but you're not doing it, you're really living in self-delusion and you're deceiving yourself. And we're finding that here, aren't we? In Romans chapter two, would you look at verse number 21, as now the apostle Paul is, has highlighted what their attitude is, and, and it's an attitude of religious pride, and there's no pride that stinks worse than religious pride. So it's an attitude of religious pride. Now watch what Paul says to them. And this is really sarcastic. Verse number 21. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Hey, instead of teaching everyone else what the law means, you might want to take a second look and teach yourself what it means. Uh, Thou that preachest another man should steal, uh, should not steal. Dost thou steal? Isn't this kind of what Jesus did on the Sermon on the Mount? Because the Jews said, well, I I don't steal. Yeah, but wait a minute. Stealing or adultery or murder, boy, they're far deeper, aren't they, than just taking or doing or killing. No, there are motives behind it. What about stealing time? What about petty theft? What about, uh, you know, just little things that we take that don't belong to what I think what the apostle Paul is pointing out here is yet you're preaching the moral law of God and acting as if you are the keeper of it and the knower of it. And yet what you really need to do is look in the mirror and preach to yourself because that law was never given as a means for you to pat yourself on the back. No, that law was given to show you how exceedingly sinful you are. And you can find a full discussion on that in Galatians chapter 3. So sarcastically, Paul said, yeah, you might want to teach yourself. You might want to tell yourself not to do the things you're telling everyone else not to do. Look at verse number 22. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Remember, Jesus said, if a man looks on a woman to lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And so Paul is really zeroing in on the very essence of the law and the fact that we are not law keepers, we are law breakers, even those that were the curators of the law, that took confidence falsely in the law, these Jews. Look at verse 24 again. Thou that abhorrest idols, and boy, the the Jews abhor idols and idolatry, and they look down on all these heathen religions that would make these carvings and make these idols out of stone and erect these monuments, and we would never do that. And yet, what does Paul say? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? You know, have, have you sinned against the real purpose of what the temple is and the accoutrements of the temple? In other words, you're actually practicing idolatry too. Verse number 23, thou that makest thy boast of the law. That's really what this is all about. You are bragging because you have the law. You know more than other people. You have this special connection with God that they don't have. And and it's making you full of yourself. Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law dishonorest thou God. Really, the law is not something, even though you're proud of it, that indicates how close you are to God. No, the very law that you're bragging about is that which is screaming at you and showing you just how far from God you are. Look at verse number 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. 
And it doesn't take but a cursory reading of the Old Testament to see that the Jews did not reflect the glory of God through the keeping of the law to the Gentile nations. No, the Gentile nations actually blasphemed God, thought lower of God, abused the name of God because of the Jews not keeping the law. And we could go right through the world kingdoms and talk about Egypt and Assyria and Babylon and Medo-Persia and Greece and Rome and all of them. Did they have a higher and loftier view of God because of the Jews or a lower view of God? It it was lower. Why? Uh, They blasphemed God. Why? Because the Jews who claimed to know God and claimed to be curators of the word of God and the law of God were actually breaking it, weren't they? And giving God a bad reputation. Would you look at verse number 25, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. So they were proud of the fact that their boys were circumcised. That was a sign. That was an external sign of the fact that we belong to God. Kind of like some denominations today baptize their children. If we just do something to our children to signify, to identify them as Christian, well, then they're Christian. If we circumcise our babies to identify them as Jewish, well, then we're right with God. Then we're God's children. And what Paul said is you can't just do something magic or something physical to your children and assure their relationship with God. Watch what it says. For the circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. makes no difference how you identify if you're not keeping the law of God. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, that's the Gentile world, keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? In other words, isn't it far more important what you actually do than what you claim to be or what how you claim to identify or some religious rite that you did one time? Isn't it much more important what you do? This is not teaching that the Gentiles somehow can keep the law. He's just making the argument that is it not works that really indicate what a person is and what he truly believes? Verse number 27, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, that's the Gentile world, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law? So in other words, you're judging all of them. You, you're right. You're holier than thou to all the Gentile world, but, but shouldn't a person that's actually obeying the law better than you, aren't they really on the moral high ground? Shouldn't they be the ones judging you? Boy, how have the uh, tables turned here? Verse number 28, real quickly, we'll finish the chapter for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. He is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So Paul kind of really gives the coup de grace blow here to these religious elitists, these religious moralists, these proud Jews, and says, No, you're really not a Jew because you say you are, because you had a surgical procedure when you were an eight-day-old child. No, real circumcision, real Judaism is a matter of the heart. It's what God knows. It's not what you can appear to be in front of people, but it's what God knows. The secrets that we talked about earlier uh, this week or last week in our episode, the secrets that will be judged. So God judges not just the actions, but the attitudes in his judgment of uh, the the unrighteous and ungodly world. Now, I know that that sounds a bit negative, and we're going to jump into it even a little bit more negative next chapter, but all of this is prelude to the fact that God is saying everyone's a sinner. God has concluded, the law's concluded all to be under sin. Why? So that all then are eligible by faith for the righteousness that God grants to us, the very righteousness of Jesus, the righteousness of God by faith in him. 
So we're going somewhere with this. And I hope that uh, I hope that uh, this episode has helped. We're going to jump into a brand new chapter next time. Hope you'll join us for that. God bless you, my friends. Bye.